The following video contains a significant amount of clips with flashing lights, flickering screens, and things that I think anyone with photosensitive epilepsy should generally avoid. If that describes you, I recommend that you skip this video. If you suffer from migraines, I recommend that you are cautious with this video. There's so many different flickers that I can't really put a warning between each of them. For some reason, during the 90s and early 2000s, everyone was a little bit fixated on making things as small and compact as possible. With this fixation in mind, we kind of got a lot of cool things, including pocketbooks, tiny laptops with abysmal battery lives, and tiny CRT televisions. The plan for this was to hold up tiny this tiny CRT television as I was like doing this intro, but this thing is actually a lot heavier than it looks because it's a CRT. So I'm excited to talk to you guys about another CRT TV here on Yasmin Collects, which by the way, welcome and welcome if you are new. This is my third CRT video that I've done. I've done another one on a absolutely massive Sanyo CRT that is the bane of my existence, a budget Broxonic find that I found at a thrift store. And now we're going to be talking about the MVT. 2090. This is a 9 inch combination TV VCR that I purchased on Facebook Marketplace. Unlike the scary, dark, and abysmal place that I like to call eBay, where CRT gaming televisions can be sold for upwards of $300, I got this one that to me looks to be pretty brand new, or I would say very minimally used, for $50, which I'm pretty happy with. I live in a major city and things tend to just be more expensive here and and that is no exception for resellers. And in comparison to some of the other sellers I've looked at who sell not new CRTs for two to $300, I think $50 is a fair price. It's also kind of nice to get the background story of where a unit comes from. Oftentimes when I'm doing a Facebook marketplace exchange, the people kind of want to get away from me as quickly as possible. But unfortunately for them, I'm autistic and I get very, very excited about my special interests. So I want to know where this TV came from. The seller who sold it to me was cleaning out her mother's home and found it in a storage space in the house. So as far as it seems, I don't think that this TV was actually used, although we need to go inside the box a little bit more to determine if that's true. And what a nice box this is. I really don't like to keep cardboard in the house because it attracts bugs, but this is a really, really cool box and it's always fun to find units in their original condition. Great for home or on the road. <laughs> Energy Star, which I now know is mostly a marketing gimmick, but when I was a little kid, I thought that Energy Star, first of all, I thought the Energy Star logo was one of the coolest logos I've ever seen and I just always kind of looked for it on old PCs. <laughs> now here's something of a special interest that I'd like you guys to take a peek at. This little sticker right here, if you can see, it says QVC order number 338750, which means whoever purchased the CRT bought it off of QVC. I tend to associate QVC with weird makeup bundles and brands that no one's ever heard of, but I guess at one point they were selling Memorex CRTs. Also, I feel like I've been calling this a Magnavox CRT, but it's not. It's a Memorex, and thank God for that. The most I've done with this unit so far is hold it up for you guys to see. I haven't even checked the back to see what year it was manufactured in because I want to guess based off its appearance. And looking at it, I'm going to say either 1999 or 2002. Why I've chosen those two years, I can't tell you, but that's what my gut is telling me. <laughs> I was right. So what we're gonna do is, of course, test this TV. I'm going to give you guys a detailed unboxing and assuming that the TV works, we'll also be testing out the VCR. I love VCRs, as many of my subscribers will know on this channel. However, I don't always love VCRs built into CRTs because they are, quite frankly, horrendous to work on, if not borderline impossible. So if this VCR is in poor condition or doesn't work, I don't really know what I'm gonna be willing to do with it because I hate handling and opening and 
interacting with CRTs, as some of you may know. If you guys like CRTs and you're excited to watch me unbox this thing and just generally geek out about it, then you're in the right place. Let's get started with the rest of the video. Alrighty, let's get those travel plans started off right by unboxing our brand new Memorex Combination TV VCR. I'm giving you a little bit more of a look at the box as I did earlier, but here are some of the specific specs, including the V-chip parental lock, built-in VHS video recorder, and a closed caption detector. This box even had the styrofoam in it, so it was pretty cool to lift everything up and see what was underneath. The first thing we have is the user manual. I am so bad with these little projects, but if it's not already up on some sort of manual archiving website, I'll try to do that at some point. We also have the remote, which did come wrapped in plastic, but I pulled it out right after I purchased the unit because I wanted to make sure that I had the replacement batteries at home. You never know, double or triple A. We also have what I now know is a TV tuner slash antenna, but admittedly I'm new to this kind of thing, so this is what I said instead. Literally, what is this? It looks kind of uh, inappropriate. Oh, you know what? I know what this, is this? No. Okay. I don't care about any of this anyways. And we also have the limited warranty. I know some of you guys got a little angry at me in my Panasonic video, which I hate the word viral, but did very well on my channel and is kind of the reason why I have an audience in the first place. And a lot of complaints on that video is that I claim that the VCR was new, even though was it new? No. So I hesitated to put the word new in this video title, but the remote was in the plastic. I still have the warranty and this thing, well, actually, there's a tape stuck in the TV. I was just about to say that I think I can finally accurately say that I purchased something new, but I think there's a tape stuck in there. Oh, no. Giving you guys a closer beauty shot of this unit. It's quite pretty. I really like it. It's small, it's compact, it's got the little buttons on there. Not as many buttons as I would like, but you know, I'm still happy with it. We also have a pretty decent sized speaker on both the left and the right side. I also was not really able to shine a light in between those little holes because if you guys can't see the ventilation holes are pretty tiny but I promise you this was literally the cleanest CRT interior that I've ever seen in my life. There was like not a single speck of dust and I couldn't see much but the capacitor seemed to be okay. We also have the back with the manufacture date that I guessed correctly and two more inputs on the back in addition to a input for a coax cable. And here's another glamour shot of the front. Look at that Energy Star logo. There's just something about that logo, you guys. I love it. There is a little bit of cosmetic damage. I'm pointing it out here. It's, it's just a little nick, nothing crazy. There's really nothing else that I can point out cosmetically. This thing is pretty much like new. Next thing I need to tackle is the remote. It did come with batteries, which kind of sucked, but I pulled those out and there wasn't any corrosion or something like that. I'm using these knockoff Active Energy AAA batteries. I have no idea where I got these. Maybe a discount store or something like that, but I popped the batteries in, went to check it, and unfortunately, we have no light. Nothing to indicate life on this remote me not remembering that it's just entirely possible that the backlight is burnt out i ended up taking the batteries out putting them back in and deciding that we will just have to test them Alrighty, so i have this memorex set up in its home this is where it will live i also took the time to just do a little bit of retro tech housekeeping if you're into this hobby you either need to be very very organized or you will quickly have a panic attack because having physical media requires a lot of 
time and effort to make sure that you're not surrounded by a lot of clutter. This remote isn't working, but also maybe it is working and the backlight is just not. I'm gonna see if the remote is pre-programmed and turns on and then that'll be a good test for that as well. So let me plug this in and hope my house doesn't burn down. We use surge protectors on this channel because you never knew. Where is the plug? The remote works. And we have life. Wow. I was going to say that I never ever expect a good picture with something like this. It's so tiny and obviously not a Trinitron, so not expecting perfection. But oh my gosh, I feel like that's actually pretty nice. The colors are a lot more vivid than I was expecting. So. Let me try to see, I am really bad with these kind of things. Let me see if we can get to the VCR. I feel like it would tell me. Maybe not, oh my gosh, it's crystal clear. Oh, look at that, there's the tape. What tape was this? <laughs> Stuart Little. Wow, poor Stuart Little. How long has he been trapped in that VCR? Definitely long enough, because I see dust and uh, gross, gross fuzzy things. But here it is, I get a free Stuart Little tape. I'm just inspecting it quickly, but it doesn't look moldy or anything like that, so that's good. I'm also going to do the big no-no and flip this up and see if there's any, nope. Tape looks good. I was trying to see if there was any indicator that the pinch roller is like pulling it or eating it funny, but I'm not seeing that. So that means that allegedly this VCR could work. So of course VCRs are my bread and butter. That's what I care about the most. So what I'm going to do is shine a light in here, even though I don't know if you're not supposed to do that, but how else are you guys going to be able to see inside there? Because I can't open it up. I'm going to shine a light in there, and let's just take a look at what's going on in there. I'm interested to see if there's an automatic head cleaner on here, since this is the 2000s, and this is like, we're getting close to the last gasp, the last gasp era of VCRs, which means automatic head cleaners are a thing. I know this is tough. My hands are shaky, and I'm mouth breathing because of my allergies. So everybody, we're just going to hold hands and bear with each other here. This is a extremely clean VCR. I see the head right there. We've got audio heads, those little, little posts right there, and the controller right there, which as far as my distant eye can see, looks pretty good. But this is definitely a very, very basic VCR. Ugh, I do see what I think is an automatic head cleaner though. You see that little it's hard to see. See that little plastic thing right there? I might take a screenshot and make a little circle so you guys can see. I believe, because I'm used to pulling these out, that's an automatic head cleaner, which is annoying. This clearly doesn't have a lot of hours on it. I'm assuming that since I know that this was someone's mother's VCR, I'm a, or TV and VCR, I'm assuming that the kids were watching Stuart Little couple hours maybe on the weekends and maybe not for long because this thing was clearly put back into the box and technology was advancing very very quickly at this point so DVD players were becoming a thing you guys are watching this channel you know you already know what happened but so it's not a problem is what I'm trying to say like that automatic head cleaner should be fine but over time and with frequent use it is going to quickly become much more of a burden than it is a helper and really in general it's kind of a gimmick I don't think that it's being broadcasted here or, or boasted about here that was kind of the thing too it was like oh you don't have to worry about cleaning it but that's absolutely not the case I need to pick a tape that I know is good but I don't like that much I've oh, but I haven't watched these tapes yet. I want to pick one that I've watched too. Hold up. Let me make a decision. All right, you guys, I've made a decision. I chose Dr. Seuss's Cat in the Hat. This is the Fox Kids video version, and it came from a store called Archie's. I absolutely hate the Cat in the Hat. I, I used to be a really big Dr. Seuss fan when I was a kid, but as I've grown up to be an adult, I kind of just think that the Cat in the Hat is kind of like I don't want to, I don't want YouTube to get mad at me for cursing, but he's kind of a, you know, 
starts with a D and ends with a K. He's not, he's not cool. He's weird. He's manipulative. And like this particular version just really ticked me off. My partner and I were watching it at night because what I like to do is put a tape in to help me go to sleep because it's just like relaxing. You guys get it. But this just made me mad and I didn't even end up finishing it because I was like, this is so mean spirited. Everybody leave the fish alone. He's just trying to protect the kids. Point is, I know this tape works and if it gets eaten, honestly, I'll be happy because this is a terrible story and I hate it. So. We don't even get a play button. We just get that. <laughs> to test the speakers too. and wackiest characters ever to enter your home are coming from Fox Kids Video. Isn't it wonderful? And the price is so low, you can bring home all your favorites. Like seven classic videos from Dr. Seuss. Mm, like green eggs and ham. And the little mermaid. Come on, follow me! For the superhero fan in your family, we've got Spider-Man. How about a Kickstarter? Fantastic Four. Eat napalm fish bread. Beetleborgs. You want us? Well, here we are! Yeah! Iron Man? Yeah, my armor's still in the shop. And the tick. You've got to get the scent of the prey before the hunt begins. You can also step into Bobby's world. Roger? Live life with Louie. I've never seen anything more thrilling. And find Waldo. Here I am! Hey, now you can buy them all wherever videos are sold. Fox Kids Video. We're invincible! Where kids of all ages can meet the coolest characters and family entertainment. Fox Kids Video. Hoo -hoo. Oh, wow. The camera is not helping. It says home video preview. Something mysterious is coming. And it's friendly. Uh-oh. Who is it? Casper, I already know that. Announcing Casper, a spirited beginning. So you really believe in all this ghost stuff? Sure, don't you? It's an all-new feature-length adventure. Lesson one, invisibility. I know that one already. Re pause. All right. This pause is not as fancy as my Panasonic. Uh, Technology Connections has a really, really cool video. Also, I'm not going to keep it like this. Technology Connections has a really, really cool video explaining the whole pause concept with analog video. My Panasonic Omnivision does a great job at pausing. Those kind of like static lines that you just saw there does not happen with mine. I'm assuming this is definitely of a different quality, even though it's a couple years apart. It, it went downhill very quickly, but also I'm not trying to nitpick because I'm literally dying. I love this TV. This is a great TV. It looks fabulous. My camera is just like not, it's not doing what it needs to do in terms of showcasing this, but this TV picture is really great and the sound quality is awesome as well because my Brock Sonic has, um, I think one of the speakers is blown or I don't know, the sound's just not as good. So let me do some fast forwarding. You don't get like a pause and a play. It's fast forwarding. You don't get like a pause, play, stop. You just get like a little square, a little square here, a little square there, which is a bit annoying, but. I'm gonna mute this because Fox is going to copyright strike me for this, but this is the video quality and let's see if we can't adjust the tv settings this is also a vcr recorder which is pretty cool if you wanted to record you could it's not really something that i do a ton of and i probably wouldn't do it on this one but it is an option go my brock sonic does not have closed captions so i would love to see I'm uh, figuring out this remote. Let's keep it in English. Oh, sorry. These are the VCR settings. <laughs> I'm messing with the... I'm using this part, but this is just for the VCR. I need to figure out how to do this on the TV. English. Down here. Okay, here we go. We got a clock set. Don't really need that. Daylight saving time. I think we're good. Oh, it thinks it's the year 2000. I want to see if I can adjust the picture. But it does not seem to be... Oh! 
Okay, so this would be for cable. If you had programs, I think it has like an auto. I don't, I don't know a lot about old school cable. You guys will have to fill me in. See, we've got a timer for probably for recording. I'm assuming this would actually probably be very good to use for recording cable TV. It's so small and compact and you can bring it around everywhere. It's picture, here we go. All right, brightness, we'll just keep it there. Contrast is pretty high, let's see. We can turn that down a little bit. Keep it like a four is fine. Color, keep it in the middle. Tint, sharpness, keep it on zero. Brightness, yeah, we could turn it, eh, no, it's fine. We'll keep it on negative one, that's fine. We have timer record set, system set up. I think we're already there. Yeah, clock set, auto clock. Lots of settings. These are way more settings than my Broxonic has, which I mean, Broxonic was a budget brand. I don't really know where Memorex falls into this category. I feel like it's probably a little bit higher than Broxonic, but not, not at Sony's level, but you guys let me know. I just archived this tape recently. If you guys don't follow or subscribe to my other YouTube channel, Yasmin's Archives, it's just like a channel for non-copyrighted tapes to be put on the internet. This one is from the AKC Best Friends, and it is, very long title, it is an elementary school program about dogs and responsibility for grades K through six. I think it's a really pretty tape. I like the blue and I like how it was taped at the bottom as well. So I can show you a lot more of this, which is why I wanted to do it because with these copyrighted tapes, I can't show you too much. For many of us, dogs are an important part of our lives. Dogs grow up with us as constant companions, as best friends. They stick by us, protecting and loving whatever happens or whatever we do. Dogs are always glad to see us and never too tired to play. When you really think about it, dogs bring people more than just joy and friendship. They're also a valuable part of our lives. All right, you guys get it. It's weird, purebred propaganda in a way. I have another tape that I absolutely adore. This one is also one of the best quality sort of off niche tapes that I own. It is Alaska on video, Animals of the Alaska Zoo. This is another archive tape and I think the quality of this one's really great, although I suck. I was not kind and I did not rewind, but that's okay because we can test that function as well. So the insert I will say is not very fun. The eject is super smooth, but putting the tape in kind of sucks to really push it in there almost. It does have auto rewind. So let me, let me have it determine that it's done and rewind itself. That's the thing that sucks about auto rewind. You have to wait for the tape to be done, which sometimes, especially these recorded, why am I holding this up? You can't see it. These recorded, not mass produced tapes go on and on and on before you finally actually reach the end of the tape. I should call that number. <laughs> Welcomes you to the Alaska Zoo. This is the world's farthest north zoo, and it's home for a lot of animals from Alaska and animal friends <laughs> oh. from around the world. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon on the speakers because it's not handling that very well. Kuna, a great horned owl. Bears like Apoon, the playful polar bear cub, and her playmate Oreo. And of course there's Maggie, a multi-talented African elephant. The Alaska Zoo in Anchorage, Alaska is a great place to learn more about the animals we Aww, should Aw, look at them. They're so cute. So sit back and get ready to smile 
as we get face to face with the animals. Oh my god, there's a great song on this tape too. Some of us were injured. Couldn't make it on our own. Some of us are orphans. So the zoo became our home. Now we have some human friends to make sure we're okay. Because we see new faces every day. Here's looking at you face to face. It sure is fun to meet you face to face. We got love. Oh, the song's iconic. Okay. I'm not going to add any commentary right now. If I have something, I'll put it in the editing because it's, to be honest with you guys, 2.30 in the morning. I'm real tired. But I just couldn't wait. I was so excited and... I didn't have time earlier today to film this, and so I was like, you know what? I have to do it. All right, I spent some time with this TV on my own outside of the classroom, and I've been running it for as long as I can because it's been so long, and I just, I don't know. I figured it needed to run a little bit. And the other day, I just finished watching a full movie, and I noticed this very grating, high-pitched, weird sound that just wasn't stopping. We hearing that? It's been about three minutes and the sound is no more. There is a very, very faint little buzz sound. But I'm pretty sure that's just a CRT being a CRT since these TVs do love to remind us that they use electricity. I think it's pretty hot, I have to say, compared to my Braxonic, which I don't think gets very hot at all, and I use this for extended periods of gaming. Um, it's probably just because it's compact, but also, you know what, I think we're probably hearing that sound because um, it just hasn't been run, right? This thing's been sitting for God knows how long. Tube's not charged up at all, and I do keep my things on a power strip, so I don't typically keep them plugged in, but I am going to keep this plugged in for a little bit. I'm probably going to keep running it and running it and running it just to get it warmed up. All right, y'all, I'm back and ready to play some era-appropriate games. We have my Nickelodeon plug-and-play that I did a full video on, and also I'm well-rested, so hopefully I don't embarrass myself like I did in that last video. Let's get some sound. Final thing we must do here before we do a little bit of a comparison on the picture quality for this Memorex versus my Broxonic. Of course, 
we gotta play a little bit of Wii, and you know what? I did Mario Kart last time, so let me do a little speed run on Super Mario Brothers Wii. Pizza play! Ugh, I'm trying, y'all. Alrighty, and for our last test, it is time for some serious fun. I have my Brock Sonic on the left, the tube is still warming up a little bit, and then of course we have the Memorex on the right, and what I'm going to do is do a tape comparison. Lucky for me, I do actually have two of the same tapes. It's a funny story that I won't explain now, but my friend and I somehow ended up ending our trip together with two Fantasia tapes. I really hate Disney's Fantasia. I don't know. It's boring and weird, but this one's in like perfect condition. It's got all of the mail in and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do is play them side by side. Only one of them is rewinded all the way. So I'll rewind this one. I'm gonna do it in the Panasonic because I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier. I've been playing with this TV off camera, of course. This thing takes forever to rewind. I'm thinking that was a sacrifice because technically this TV is portable. My God, it takes forever to rewind. So we're gonna do this one instead to rewind. The other joy that we have here is I have both of the functioning remotes for these VCR slash TVs. Left is Panasonic, right is of course this very non-intuitive, annoying remote that you guys know at this point I don't like. I'm gonna put the tape in here as well. Hopefully it doesn't play right away. Oh, it was gonna, all right, we got it stopped. All right, three, two, one. Let me make sure this catches up. <laughs> okay, all right, let's mute this. That's funny. Something I completely forget to touch on here is that one of these is a flat panel and the other one is a curved panel. Memorex is flat, Broke Sonic is curved, and that is most certainly going to make a difference. I don't remember the specific differences, but I also think that's probably why my camera is so confused by that Memorex. The colors are definitely more vivid on the Memorex. It's also smaller, so the picture is probably not being stretched as much. This Brock Sonic is not in the greatest condition. As you can see, one of the volume buttons has popped off, and I just suspect that this one has more hours on it, but so far, like, I think they're both great TVs. I mean, how can you compare these, really? Any CRT is very cool to me. This thing does kind of smell like ozone a little bit. You guys know I'm so paranoid about CRTs and I don't know enough. I know just enough about CRTs to be dangerous as I read 
Somebody on Reddit said that, and I feel like I gotta steal it. I think it's just burning off, like, dust and stuff, because this thing literally hasn't been powered in, like, literally 20 years. So I'm giving it time before I think that anything is gone wrong with it but i'm gonna let this run for a little bit so you guys can see the picture comparison i know it's not the best for the memorex because for whatever reason my camera it just doesn't it just doesn't want to get that one it films the broxonic great but the memorex not so much Here's a fast forward difference as well. As I noted, this Panasonic VCR does a lot better with this than this one does. I mean, this is most certainly a lower quality, bare bones travel VCR, but you can really see the difference here. Also, this one is fast forwarding significantly faster. I'm telling you, this thing is so slow, but I really think it's because of the portable nature of the device. I'm also going to show you the differences in pausing. It's actually really fun to do because yes, we're comparing CRTs, but also we're comparing VCRs. This Panasonic VCR was like right at the tail end of when quality started to drop off. This one is still made in Japan and overall I think this VCR is very quality. I enjoy, well, my rabbit trying to escape. I enjoy so much about it, so let me show you the difference. Here's a pause on the Panasonic. And there is a pause on the Memorex. Big difference. <laughs> all right, I didn't get all dolled up for this outro. Y'all have to forgive me. Overall, I think this was a really, really cool pickup. This Memorex is very interesting considering the time that it was released and also the fact that it's a travel CRT. I think that's kind of crazy to think about now, but I can totally imagine being in a minivan and seeing one of these babies in here. That would probably be peak luxury. And I think that also makes sense as to why it was sold on QVC, I'm sure. You know what, if I can try to find the QVC clip of them selling this TV. I'll definitely pop it in here so you guys can see. Overall, I just love playing around with CRTs. I love old stuff, and if you like the same things that I do, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel, Yasmin Collects. We do all kinds of things here. I do toy reviews, videos, obviously, TVs, computers, tapes, anything. I love it all. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every last one of you and comment down below if you ever owned a TV like this, if you still currently own one and let me know if you like it. All right. I'll see you guys later. Mwah. Bye.